Okay. Good morning. Welcome to our next Chat to a Champ session. I am joined today by skeleton athlete Jackie Narricott, hey guys. who is here with me to answer some of the fantastic questions that our schools have sent in. To start off with, how's your Olympic experience been so far, Jackie? It's been fun. Now that we're done, so competing's done, a lot of hard work. Now it's time to really enjoy Relax, enjoy yeah. the village and all the other aspects that come with the Olympic yep. Games. All right, we're going to get straight into our questions. Uh, the first ones are from St Brigden's Primary School in Victoria. Um, Mia from Year 4 wants to know if it does it hurt when you lie down on your, or when you jump on your sled? When you get it right, which is the most time, no. But if you happen to uh, slip or misstep and you don't quite load into the saddle properly, that's when it can hurt. Right. Um, Matt wants to know, what is your favourite food to keep up your energy? Ooh, during training, bananas and, if I'm honest, chocolate. <laughs> and what about the morning of a competition? How do you normally start your day? Uh, morning competition will be wake up. If we've got a morning race, coffee, uh, usually with, like, yogurt and bananas and well, berries of pancake, if I can get it. And then depending on what time of the day, depends on whether we go straight to the track and get everything going there. Well, we kind of hang out, which was the case this time around. Just sort of slowly build into it. Awesome. We should probably start off before we do our questions with you explaining what skeleton is. <laughs> um, so do you want to give us a bit of a rundown of your sport? Okay, so basically take a water slide, ice it, so that it's, it's like a skating rink, and then take a boogie board, take a run, uh, running start, and dive on it head first, and go down it. As fast as you can. As fast as you can. As fast as no breaks. Wins. Yeah. Very scary. All right, our next question is from Dali, uh, Dal, Dali, Isla, and Stephen, who want to know, what is your fastest time? What is your record? Okay, so that one's hard to answer because every track is different. Um, so I've got best times across all the different tracks because none of them are the same. I think it's just changed constantly. Um, but here, my best time is now 52, 52, I think. Yeah, 50, 50, 50, 53, I think. 53, it was. There we go. First yeah. run of the competition. Yeah. Um, and what's the top speed that you get up to when you're going down the track? The fastest I've gone is 135 kilometers an hour, but the fastest anyone's gone is about 147. Which is much faster than any of your parents should be driving your cars Correct. for a reference. Unless you're in Germany. <laughs> Unless you're in Germany. <laughs> okay, Emma from Year 4 wants to know how long have you been doing the sport of skeleton and what inspired you to start? My name's 16 and um, My uncle is by me to start. So, uh, he was a dual Olympian summer and winter. And then I always kind of wanted to be like him. So tried track and field, then bobsled. And curiosity got the better of me. Skills, and here we are. All right, Rhiannon wants to know what equipment do you use in the sport? Okay, so main ones are my helmet, my sled, which is the biggest thing. We've got runners, which are the metal things that are on the back of my sled, which are what give us the control. Um, spikes, which are kind of like uh, needles on a track spike, essentially. Uh, speed suit, gloves, and a mouth guard. Go be as fast as you possibly can. Precisely. Awesome. Just going to win it. Um, Patrick wants to know how long has Skeleton been in the Olympics for? Okay, so Skeleton's come in and well, we were in it until 1922, and then we lost it, and it was back in since 2002. Awesome. All right, Lexi and Payne want to know how often do you train, where do you train, and do you go to different tracks? Yeah, uh, so two different uh, schools on that. So during summer, I'll train six days a week, usually once, maybe twice a day, depending on what I need to do. Um, and then once season starts, then we'll go around to all the different tracks in the Northern Hemisphere. And so we'll, we'll spend, we'll, we'll do a sliding session between five and six days a week, plus lifting and sprinting on top of all of that. And you can't train on a track in Australia yet, can you? Because there's not, there is no one. track yet. So this is oh, this is another closest one. So we're like what nine hours away. <laughs> right. This is the home track here yeah. in uh, South Korea. All right, Lily and Damien want to know what do you like the most about skeleton and why is it called skeleton? Okay, I really should know that. Um, and there's there, there's a few different theories as to why it's called skeleton. Part of it is it's the skeleton of a bobsled. Part of it is because the saddle looks like a rib cage. So pick one of them. Um, none of us really know the the exact answer. <laughs> uh, what's the other part of that? Uh, what do you like the most about skeleton? Oh, the speed. It's an adrenaline rush and it's so much fun when it goes when it goes well. Very quick sport if you're down the track in 50 seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Hudson and Sienna want to know, is it scary and how many times have you crashed? It's not scary when it's going well, um, which is what happens for the most part. On the bigger tracks, so Whistler, which is the fastest track in the world, when you start to get a little bit offline, it can get a little hairy. I have crashed 
six times, I think, in my career. But thankfully not for a little while. Right. What happens when you crash? Just fall off the sled? Yeah, basically. So, um, they tend to be fairly mild crashes in comparison to some people, but you kind of come, you tend to come out of a curve a little bit too late. So coming around a curve like this, and then the curve will end and you'll still be up here. So you can just kind of fall onto your, the side of the sled and then go mm. from there. We uh, saw someone last night in the Bob say put their sled over. Oh, so that's a bit yeah. more terrifying in some of the <laughs> other sliding sports, I think as well. Um, all right, next question is, how confident are you in skeleton? Do you have to have a lot of confidence when you're on the start line? Yeah, you have to be pretty sure of yourself, particularly on different tracks. So there's uh, Whistler and Altenburg in Germany, at the, probably the two tracks in the world. Uh, Whistler, because it's, it's fast, so you need to be on your game at all times, otherwise it can be a little bit dicey. And then Altenburg is really technical, and so there's, there's a couple of big corners that can flip you if you're not paying attention. Right. So you just got to be on your game, yep. morning of a race. All right, now I've got some questions from Gladstone West State School in Queensland. Their first question is about the opening ceremony. They want to know, was it close to your event? And um, I know the answer to this. Yeah. Did you attend the opening ceremony? Um, and what else are you looking forward to at the Olympics? Okay, so yes, I did go to the opening ceremony. We had training the following day, but it wasn't official training. Um, so there was no way I was missing that. It was too good an opportunity to miss. And we were so close, it was kind of... A no-brainer. Yeah, the Olympic Stadium was five minutes away from the village, so yeah, it was easy. What was the best part about marching in the opening ceremony? Marching in the opening ceremony, like the the whole atmosphere surrounding when we walk, when we're walking in and the lights. It was so much fun. I almost wish it was a little bit longer mm. because of how small the stadium was. We got round really quickly. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, for closing, we'll uh, slow that down a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And what else are you looking forward to at the Olympics? Seeing everyone else compete. Like we get to see all these amazing sports on TV, but getting to see it live is so much cooler. Mm, definitely. Okay, how many days did your event run for and well, how many runs did you get on the track? Okay, so race day in, at the Olympics is two, over two days. We get four runs, two on each day. And then leading up to that, we get six training runs, which is a pretty standard protocol for, for World Cup. Um, but you've been on this track before, so you've been down a few times. Yeah, I think we hit 50 runs total by the time we finished OT3. Awesome. All right. And how much time is available for you to train on the actual track? We'll kind of touch on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, it depends on the track. So this time around, because it's an Olympics and it's a new track, they had to give us 40 runs prior to official training starting. And then once official training starts, it's the same protocol as what happens at every other race. Mm -hmm. So we get two runs across three different days of training. We don't have to take all four, four six. We have to take at least two. Okay. All right, next question is, what were your realistic goals for these Olympic Games? Um, I came in wanting to finish about eighth, um, which in theory was realistic. Um, 16th was, was was okay. Like the, the girls who all beat me have all medaled with the exception of the Korean um, on World Cup in the last two years, and then it's the Korean's home track. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to beat. Yeah, home track advantage. That's what happens in sport though, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, are you staying in Korea after the Olympics to do tourist things or do you go and compete at other competitions? Competition for us is done, thankfully. <laughs> Time to go home and get some sun. Um, so I'll stay in Korea until the closing ceremony and then do a little bit of sightseeing whilst also cheering on the rest of our team. Yeah, awesome. All right, what are you most looking forward to at these games? Obviously, it, competing was, was high on that list and now that that's done, like, cheering on everyone else and getting to see these amazing athletes do it all live. Cheer on the Aussies. Yeah. Awesome. All right. What is the Olympic Village like? What's the food like? What's the accommodation like? It's just cool. It's a little it's a little more compact than I was kind of expecting when they said it's a 400 meter walk from basically the, the entrance to where we're staying. Like, yeah. This could be a bit far. Yeah. But it's, it's been good. The rooms are comfy. It's all good. Food's getting a little old, mm. but I think that's what happens when you're, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you've got buffet for three weeks straight. That's right. So for reference, the Australian team has, uh, in the Olympic Village, it's all big residential towers. Um, and we have, we're in one building, Building 103. Yep. Um, and we have all our athletes living in their rooms on different floors. And then we have a space downstairs that has been converted into kind of an athlete chill out zone. That so is the best. The athletes have been loving that. They've been having breakfast down there. We've got um, nutritionists and chefs down the bottom who are preparing Vegemite on toast. We fix all of the Aussie, all of the Aussie goods. Pretty much anything we want within reason, because they don't have to have a kitchen. That's right. But they, they've got, they made, they had cake yesterday. 
Oh, yeah. This was John Farrow's birthday, our other skeleton athlete. Um, so we're making sure that all our athletes are very comfortable and they've been watching sport on TV when they've got training and ready to go. But now that you're done, you can get out there and cheer from your cold yeah. sidelines. Yeah. All right, I've um, got a couple of questions from the International School of Western Australia. From Lisa, where did you grow up? Brisbane. Brisbane girl. So you're one of three Queenslanders in this team. So our winter team is predominantly made up of New South Wales athletes with a couple of Perth boys in the bobsled team in there as well, but there are three Queenslanders. Um, uh, is skeleton hard? Um, to go fast, yes. Um, to get down, not so much. Basically, we could put a sack of potatoes on a, on a sled, send it down, and it'll get down no problem. But to get down fast, it does take a bit of skill. Yeah. Okay, now I've got some questions from St. Philomena's School in Bathurst in New South Wales. Um, first one from Isabel, how many times have you been to the Olympics? This is my first one. Got plans for many more? Uh, yes, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Max wants to know, how cold is it when you're competing? Depends on where we are and the time of the year. So this has actually been the coldest that we've had this time around. I think it was minus 25 when we got here this time. Um, but then the rest of the season, it's been anywhere from about six degrees up to sort of minus five. And you've got a bit of an interesting um, race routine with your clothing. Talk us through <laughs> that. It's a bit of a tricky one. Okay, so obviously when we when we uh, slide, we're in a speed suit. Um, but my coach from QAS gave me a reflective blanket, which keeps my legs nice and warm. And then when we got here, we got this big uh, green trench coat, which is the best thing for having on the start line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so once the sort of that, about the 30 second mark, my helmet goes on. Then with about 10 seconds to go, jacket comes off. And then as soon as the green light goes, rip, rip the blanket off and take off. Take off. And then someone's waiting at the bottom with another jacket, more clothes to put back on because it's yeah. very cold. Yeah, truck rides are painful. And then that. you jump in a truck and come back to the top and do it all again. Yeah. So yeah. your bag goes back down. It's uh, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> okay, um, Alana wants to know, what will your training regime be now that the games are over? Um, kind of whatever I feel like. So at this point, we're now into rest and recovery and getting ready for um, pre-season start in, in kind of April. So at this point, it's a case of stay, stay active, but don't, there's no structure around it, which is nice for a change. And when does the next World Cup season start? World Cup will start in probably the term around December. Okay, awesome. Um, Liam, who is your trainer? So who is your coach? I have a couple of different coaches. So I have my gym coach, Chris, from QIS. I have a sprint coach, uh, Rob, who's based in the UK. And then this time around, I've had a sliding coach, which has been nice, Rob, who was with me here. I think, thanks to the RBSF, they were, they were amazing this year. Awesome. Okay, uh, is training and competing tiring from Tom? Yes. Um, training uh, over summer is tiring, and then when you get sliding, it's a whole new ball game. Usually because it takes your head, just ends up being so tired. It's a lot of mental energy, particularly in the first couple of, couple of weeks where mm -hmm. you just get back into it, finish sliding, and go, okay, it's nap time now. <laughs> Lots of recovery involved in the training process yeah. as well. All right, Tim wants to know, who is your closest rival? There's a few of them. Um, probably the Dutch girl, Kim Boss, at the moment. We're at a fairly similar sliding ability at this point. So, and uh, the Women's Skeleton event was won by a girl from Great Britain? Yeah, and first to go back to back. First to go back to back. Interesting. And then a German competitor came in second and then another Great British athlete yeah. came in third. We were definitely above... Team GB on the medal tally until the skeleton events. <laughs> um, is any of your family travelling to the games with you from Lila? Yeah, mum and dad here, which has been so much fun. Would, would have been good to have my brother, but that's way too Yeah, And it's you're up to see them today? Yes. Which is very exciting. Okay, next question from Cade. How are you finding the Olympic Village? It's good. Um, I think having our little athletes lounge is, has made things so much better. Being able to get, just wake up and get a breakfast here without having to put on 17 layers to get a breakfast makes life so much better that's right um Deanna wants to know are you the only female skeleton athlete representing Australia yes and this needs to change please mm -hmm. find friends we need girls <laughs> so how many and I think it's three athletes is the most one country can have yeah representing in in the sport yeah so, so please I I'm it girls we need you please come out if you're a good sprinter <laughs> Yeah. And you want to throw yourself headfirst down a sliding track. Tell That's your mum and dad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one is from Isabel and Lila. Are you happy with the Australian uniform? 
And I guess we can say you've started about the closing ceremony now and how long does it go for? They've done an amazing job with our uniform. It's comfy. The colours are amazing. It all fits fantastic. And most importantly, it's warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a closing ceremony, I can't wait. It's, yes. But for more reports, this is the uh, the fun one. Yep. The opening ceremony is the kind of more serious one. And then yeah. this one we get to have a big fun. party. Yeah. <laughs> Very exciting. Okay, Tim wants to know, what speed were you aiming at down the track? Um, we didn't really look at the speed. So the speed trap here isn't the most reliable of, <laughs> of speeds. Um, the way we were kind of like concentrating on was the one out of corner four, okay. um, which I wanted to hit 100k an hour out of that corner, which I did. So, awesome. We're so travelling as fast as a car. Yep. <laughs> All right, now I've got some questions from Launceston Prep School in Tasmania. Um, Jack wants to know, have you made any new friends in the Olympic Village? Yeah, a lot of, mainly from our team. There's obviously, like, there's been a few people who I've sort of seen on Instagram and TV and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But then there's been some others who, like, our cross-country skiers and big air girls. It's, it's been good fun. That's the thing about the Olympic Games, although you're a winter athlete and they are winter athletes, you never see them. You're completing completely different sports and it's really nice. We have a team of 51 athletes, so you now have new friends from all other winter sports. Yeah, nice. um, there's also an interesting way to make friends at the Olympic Games, which you've got around your neck. <laughs> yeah, so pin collecting. This is a yeah. very small collection. Um, but yeah, basically we get pins and then everyone, everyone really likes our pins. Mm. We, we have out. a little boxing kangaroo pin that, uh, all of the other countries are very, they all want to get their hands on them. Oh so yeah. There's lots of pin trading. Um, okay. Charlie wants to know, what does it feel like at the start of a race? Um, it can be a, a little nerve wracking. So usually there's, there's no, it's more anticipation and excitement than it is scary, I guess. Um, and then you just kind of focus and ready to go awesome all right uh do you crash in many races we can touch on that before from josie not for the last few years so my first couple of years i was um just because i wasn't very good which is what happened when, you, when you're learning mm -hmm. um and then the last few years it's been been better awesome um, now how many sleds have you taken to the olympics i've only got one sled most of us only only travel with one um we can customize it and you tend to like to get used to one particular sled but the runners so the metal things that are on my sled I've got four sets with me. Yeah. Um, but I know people who have got, you know, 10 plus sets. Yeah. So the sled itself is this, because it's very heavy, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah. Traveling with more than one of them is not no. an option. <laughs> That's right. And um, Jared wants to know has it been difficult getting used to the cold here in Pyeongchang? Uh, it was freezing. The, the wind is, is the worst part. Mm -hmm. um, but we're winter athletes. It's kind of off the course. Um, and Felix wants to know what were you doing in Pyeongchang before your competition? Okay, so when we, I was in here for about a week before we started training. Um, just spent the first few days kind of wandering around, getting used to where everything was, um, being a kid. It's first time in here. It's so exciting. <laughs> um, and then we, we finally got down to, the, to training and settling in. Awesome. Um, Portia wants to know, what are the main differences between South Korea and Australia? Uh, food, language. <laughs> um, the people are amazing, though. So they, they, they will try it. They'll do anything to, mm. to help you out. Food's amazing, but very, very different. Obviously, two massive different, massively different cultures. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to Pyeongchang before from Jet? Yeah, twice. So we were here in March for the test event. We spent three weeks here. And then we were here again in October. Awesome. Um, Rosson wants to know, how do you get yourself ready for a race? Maybe run us through that day. Okay. So I'll take you through race day here because it was a little bit different to what every other race day is. Um, basically, I got up. Watch the men's race because um, they were competing before us, which was a bad idea. <laughs> Very nerve wracking. Um, finished off sled, sled work and basically trying to keep myself busy without um, tiring myself out too much. So lots of chilling, lots of reading, coloring in, just anything to try and keep mind occupied on things other than what was about to happen. Because if you overthink it, then it's kind of you're behind the eight ball before you even, even start sliding, which mm. is not great. No. Maybe not. Alrighty, our last question. Do you prefer racing in Australia or Pyeongchang? It's kind of a hard one because you can't race in Australia. <laughs> but how about Pyeongchang versus the other tracks that you race on around the world? I love this track. It is so much fun. Um, it's tricky in bits, there's but there's really unique bits in it too. Um, it's it's one of my favorites on tour, particularly. Yeah. Um, and what's your message to any of our students that are watching that may want to go to an Olympic Games one day? It's hard. 
but it is 100% worth it. Um, so I started, I wanted to do this when I was nine years old watching Sydney and it will take time. It, there will be tears that there's a lot of hard work involved, but it is worth it. Don't give up. It will eventually, potentially, if you find, find the right, right avenue, then it will happen. Just got to believe in yourself enough to not give up. Awesome. We need female skeleton. We need female and male skeleton athletes. Yes, so. but particularly female. We've got <laughs> <our males. laughs> all right. Thank you to all our schools for sending in some awesome questions today. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about skeleton. And hopefully we will see Jackie back on the Olympic track in four years' time Beijing. in Beijing. So oh we've got lots of very close Olympic games. So big thank you to everyone at home in Australia. We'll sign off now. Um, thanks again for chatting with us. Thank see you later. Bye.